What's up, you guys? Welcome back. Today we got another video, and we're going to be going into my settings with the Lisa Strata Prime. Before we start today's video, a huge shout out to Sweetwater for actually letting me be able to mess around with this kit. And uh, yeah, I was I've been having fun with this kit, and uh, definitely I think I dialed in the settings the way I like it. And it's a lot of you guys on Instagram, TikTok, and YouTube after seeing me mess around with this and do different covers. You guys definitely asked to make a video on my settings. So yeah, I have the module here. Make sure to just copy everything that you see. And uh, yeah, before we do this though, make sure to go into your settings. If you're going to copy my settings, make sure to do a full reset before you do all of this. All right. So one of the kick drums that I do is the 24 inch Birch kick drum. I have the volume for this all the way up. I like the way it sounds. Um, there's another one here that I love. Metal kick. I actually really like them. There's something about that one that really... But this one right here is definitely one of my favorite kicks. This one's it's a really dope one, especially when you're playing different gospel tracks and stuff. This kick really stands out in the track. So this is another one. This is the first kick drum that I used a lot, and it's the 24-inch copper kick. That kick is that's I, I really love that one. But the kick drum I'm using right now, that's this one right here, all right? It's actually, it's actually getting the job done. <laughs> so the hi-hat, I'm using this Sabian one right here. You can see I put the attack to 50, and I have the volume, not all the way up, but almost. And I always just play with that, also in the mixers, but I'll get into that. That's pretty much the hi-hat. So when it comes to the cymbals, the most important thing that I'm noticing with the cymbals is just bringing the attack up. It doesn't really matter which cymbal I'm picking. Um, for the most part, there are times where, like this one, yeah, some of these cymbals, I will even just, like, for example, this one, nice little minor cymbal, but there's times where I'll even just tune it down or I'll tune it up. Yeah, that's a little thing that I do with some of the symbols. Yep, the rod I'm using right now is this one. It, it, it ranges between the dark energy, this one, some other ones, but pretty much to get the most out of the sound that I'm looking for, it's usually me messing around with the attack and also the trigger settings that I'll get into as well. So pretty much the toms I'm using is, the it's out of these three. So for the eight inch, I'm using this 10 inch, but I tuned it up as you can see. Here's the second one. This is the only one that I used a different tom for, but I'm gonna go back so you can you can copy this stuff on the module. So the eight inch. All right, 
So let's get into the mixer. All right, so for the mixer, it's pretty much, I'm literally just gonna go through on the module. You can just copy what I have here. So for the kick, I pretty much got the air compressor and I picked the heavy, all right? And this is pretty much the settings I have here for the kick. Here's what I got for the snare. I have a few things on here. I have, let's see here. I have this one. Where are we at? This one right here. And I just clicked the option for more body. <laughs> and I have that actually on all of the times. All of the times I have that. The snare and the toms. Let's see here for this EQ. Let's see. I think for the EQ I went with more body for the snare. So like I said, that's pretty much what I have for all of the toms. Like, like this plug-in right here really helps bring these toms out. And the option I pick is more, more attack and more body. I go between those two. All right. Let's see here. With the symbols, I just picked an EQ, and I just picked the brighter options for those. Let's see. Yep, for the hi hat brights. And all the other symbols, I just did symbols bright one or two, either one. That's what I did for all the symbols. Okay, and here's another thing. When it comes to the mix for the drums, for reverb, I use the default reverb, FX amount 80% and 41% reverb. I use that for all of them. Kick, snare, toms, everything. Just to make that as simple as possible. All right, so let me get into the, the triggers. So after talking with Elisis, pretty much what I learned from them is every drum and all the hi-hats and the cymbals, you want the curve to be on log one. I don't know why. I, I mess around with some of them. So it's just going to be that consistent sound no matter how soft or hard you hit it. But I noticed that log one has been the most consistent with getting it to feel like a regular hi-hat. And it's the same with the drums and the other cymbals. And um, yeah, let's go to advance. So when it comes to this hi-hat with the open and close thing, so this one's really tricky. I find myself always having to go into the, the hi-hat setting and doing this whole uh setup thing process i usually do this honestly i do this maybe once every three times i sit on this kit uh, it's it, i i like the idea i i'm not a fan of like how it's executed it's not i'm not a fan i'm not a fan i'm always going back and forth trying to get this to actually act right but I've seen people find a lot of success in this. Me personally, yeah, I find myself always having to calibrate this every other like three sessions. But if you don't know how to do it, you pretty much go here and you loosen this up. What keep take your foot off the pedal, wait for that to stop, press set, and then put your foot back to the desired height that you want. Yeah, that's that's pretty good for now. Actually, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. That one. All right. And hit finish. So, yeah, that pretty much, that, that feels good for now. Um... Those are the settings for my hi-hat here for the advanced settings, the top, bottom, actually the top, I need, I usually have the top around 4,000. 
I don't even know why it's there. <laughs> Let's see. All right, yep. and you have to save it. So I'd save it. So when it comes to the Learn X Talk, you pretty much go through each drum, the cymbals, the hi-hats, anywhere the triggers are and hit it as hard as you can. And it like pretty much logs in where it's getting picking up those sounds. And it, it attempts to cancel that stuff out. So if I... I shouldn't hear too much bleeding with the cymbals or anything like that. But after talking with Elisa's, they pretty much recommended not to even mess with this because it's still natural to hit this and get some type of cymbals to come off from that. If even in an acoustic kit, which I've experienced a lot. So yeah, you can mess with this. I've messed with it and clearly it's still not the best. Like I said before, you was, you're going to be able to hear me while I'm talking, you're going to hear these cymbals go off. And I have this set already. So I don't know if this is really, it's doing something, but not, not enough to really worry too much about this setting. The only time they mention that this is really something to dial into is if you're playing this like in a live gig where you have a bass amp next to you and you have the keyboard player on the other side, their vibration will definitely pick up off these cymbals and trigger these when you don't hit them. So that's the de that's definitely when you need to work on messing with these settings. Let's see here. Let's go here. One more thing I forgot to mention when it comes to setting up these drums is the stack option right here. So let me go here. So anytime, perfect, here's a tip. Anytime you, you really need to learn to use this hit to select so you'll be able to minimize the time to set the stuff up. So after doing that, I'm messing right now with the rim of the snare. So you can click any of these. See here, I'm using the 13 inch brass snare. And what I like to do is tune the sound down. So I have it here at 631. Let's bring it all the way back up. And you'll see what I'm talking about. Let's see here. So yeah, I like having like a lower sound for this. That it definitely makes more sense when you hear the type of music that I'm playing too. It just blends in a lot better than having it at that higher sound point. All right, I have the attack at 85%. I have the volume for this stack almost all the way up. Actually, I need to turn it up even more, to be honest. All right, so after you do that, you can just X out of stacks and then just continue setting up your drums. Let's go back to stacks real quick because I have one more stack go here. So right here, I added a clap, obviously. And you can do that. You can literally go through from the search. You can hit library, actually class, and go all the way to percussion. And then here's the clap right here. And uh, yeah. It has all type of different percussions, but I find it easier to just use the clap here.
So there's been a lot of comments on getting unwanted hits on the kick and some of the other drums. I definitely experienced that. I talked to Lisa's on why that could be happening. He definitely let me know that when these come out the box, they're tuned really low and you're, you're supposed to tune all of the heads high. Definitely the kick drum. So after tuning all of that stuff up, I'm rarely having any trigger issues. So uh, yeah, that's per that's my settings. That's pretty much some different tips on what I learned when it comes to dealing with issues with the kit. It's definitely a nice kit. I definitely see a lot of things that would make this kit even better if it's looked at and changed. Definitely the hi-hat. I'm not a fan. I'm not a fan of the hi-hat. But then again, I've seen so many videos on YouTube of different drummers finding the perfect setup for the hi hat. They're just not, you know, they're not talking about what they did. They just said they found a perfect setup for it. Yeah, not a fan of the hi-hat. Once again, it's a great idea, great concept. I'm just not a fan. I would, I would prefer two different, two hi-hats. And not this, um, this, this, this one hi-hat feature. I love how these symbols feel for sure. Yep, definitely the choke feature is nice. I like the fact that you can do it with, with just your stick too. I like the way the drums feel as well, but like, yeah. So yeah, that's my settings. Huge shout out to Sweetwater for letting me check this out. And um, yeah, this definitely is my introduction to electric kits. And uh, it's not a bad one. It's not a bad one. Not a bad one at all. I'm ha I have a lot of fun on this kit. And uh, definitely it helps with the volume noise complaints that I've been getting in the past. And uh, yeah, I could practice this stuff all night, all day.
yeah, this is definitely a dope kit. Um, I definitely recommend this kit if you're really in a place where noise is a issue. And uh, yeah, the only way you can get this Bondo kit, though, that is only through Sweetwater. And it is definitely an affiliate. So if you guys, all of you guys that are in the comments and previous videos that have mentioned that you are really interested in getting this kit, it will be linked down in the description box below. It is an affiliate. So if you buy it from that link, you're supporting the channel tremendously. And uh, yeah, I really appreciate it. Let me know what you guys think about this kit down in the comments below. And if you have any tips on the trigger settings or the hi-hat settings, let me know down in the comments. And yeah, I'll see you guys on the next one.